Alrighty, today we're going to be looking at the um, composure and AOV passes and um, compositing, garbage mats, all that stuff uh, for the sequence editor rather than for real time stuff. Um, so this has a slightly different workflow to it, um, although it can be quite handy to do, um, especially if you're into all that sort of compositing stuff. So this um, is sort of like a, a carry on from my previous video um, however I'm going to make sure this one can sort of stand on its own so you won't have to watch that one if you're not interested in that sort of stuff um, so you, I've just got a base sequence here um, with just a little bit of camera move and that's what we're going to be using today um, and so you will need composure enabled for this um, now uh, two things um, the camera you use composure has to use a possessable camera not a spawnable camera so cameras recorded with the take recorder um, autom are automatically spawnable so you'll have to convert them back to possessable before you can use them with composure um, and secondly that uh, the other thing is you you do not have to do this at the time you record it if you're using like the um, camera uh, tracking stuff you don't have to record the composure you don't even have to have composure on at the time of doing this um, you can do this much later and in fact I think trying to record the composure stuff in the take recorder causes errors so just avoid doing that um, so what we need to do to do this um, is create a new comp so I'm going to just create a new comp and say okay um, and in the details panel we're going to assign our camera to it Oh, we need a layer before we can do that. Um, so we will need, so uh, we'll add a layer element. Um, and this is going to be, we're going to do CG layers. And this is going to be our, um, I guess, our base layer. Um, like so. Uh, and in it, we are going to... Yeah, and so now if we look at our composure, yeah, we have a target camera actor. And so um, you'll notice uh, your ca spawnable cameras will show, and that's spawnable cameras are the ones with like the little lightning bolt on the image. Um, spawnable cameras will show up, but when you click it, it automatically unclicks again. Um, so that's why you can't use them. I don't know if that, don't know why, but yeah. Uh, so this is going to be a base layer. This is going to be sort of the very back. So I guess it could be the background as well. Um, and so you need to create a new CG layer for each um, set of objects you want to be separate. Um, so in our case, we're only going to do one because uh, that's one is enough. Um, so oh, what did I click? So we're going to create another layer um, and we're going to do a CG layer and I'm going to call this foreground like that. Um, and so for each new layer of objects you want separated out, you're going to need to create both a CG layer and a CG map for it. Like so. Uh, foreground mat. Uh, like that. And so next what we need to do is use the layers system to add the objects to each layer. So uh, in if you don't have it open, mine just shows up in the top corner here, um, under windows and layers is how you open it. Uh, so you can go into it um, and what you do is you can just select the objects you want to be in a different path. So I'm actually going to make all of our uh, BSP shapes here in it and I'm so I'm going to select all of them and you right click and you can click add selected actors to new layer. And I'm going to call this foreground. And so you'll need a new each a new layer for each um, pass as well, like so. Um, and so with the layers, uh, so you can toggle the visibility on and off. Quickly check what is and isn't. So the shadows are not part of shadows are because it's pre-baked lighting. Um, the shadows aren't going to disappear. Uh, so if you do want them to disappear, then you're going to have to change these all to movable and use dynamic shadows instead. Um, which is a bit annoying, but the way Unreal works. To see what's inside of this layer, um, you can just click see contents here and it'll show you and you can hide individual ones to see, and remove them here. And so go back like that. Um, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our base layer. And so your base layer, you want to subtract all your other layers from. So to do that under capture actors, we're going to hit plus uh, like so. And 
uh, we're going to drop it down and under inclusion type we're going to exclude it and we're going to exclude the foreground and as you can see now they're all missing um, and so you're going to have to add an exclusion for every layer you have now inside the foreground mat and the foreground or each layer you want to include things from you have to do more or less the same thing but inclusion rather than exclusion um, so you won't have to do this you won't have to include everything you'll just have to include the one layer you want to do so as you can see that's now generated our uh, pass and under the mat I'm going to do the same thing which will give us a holdout mat uh, include foreground there we go um, so in the previous one I said you had to switch this to garbage for the um, compositing in Unreal. I believe holdout is the more common method when it comes to external uh, programs for compositing. So we'll leave that as is. Alrighty. So now we have a mat. So if I pin all of these, we can see everything that's happening. Uh, base layer, cinema camera actor, and mat. There we go. And so as I pan around, how cool is that? Um, oh, it's gotten rid of my viewport's not big enough to fit the other one. Is it? Oh, I, I, I pinned the cinema camera actor. Foreground. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Just like that, we're going to get all these passes. And so now the next thing is how do I render this out? Um, so. To render it out, we have to actually drag all of the layers we want to render, minus the comp, into our sequence. So we have to add it to the sequence. Um, and as you can see, that automatically brings up a uh, fun little option here, which you can't actually keyframe or anything, but it just is now exists, is export output. And so you can and you can sort of enable and disable that. You know, so if you don't want to export everyone, then you know you don't have to. You can just drag the ones out you want to export um, like so. So that's going to render out a final pass. Uh, the garbage mat's always going to render out a garbage mat. Uh, it'll render out a final pass for everything else. So what if you want to render out some AOVs? So that's uh, not difficult either. Um, so in our, uh, let's go foreground and let's unpin these so we don't have to look at them anymore. Alrighty, in our foreground, all we have to do under output is there's just this little outputs array here. And so if we hit plus, um, and we realize that's the wrong thing because we want the thing that clearly says render pass. Um, so if you click on add render pass, this is where you're going to get all of your AOVs. So as many as you would ever want. Um, I'm going to go final image, and for the sake of it, I might go, gosh, so much choice. Um, pretty hot rough scene. Um, let's go normals. I have no need for a normal, but uh, that's that. For this one, we'll go final image and uh, opacity does not render anything. I do not believe, unless you have an object with a material with opacity. Roughness, let's go roughness on this one. Um, the garbage mat you don't have to do because a garbage mat is a garbage mat. There's like, you can't get more. Like it shows other options, but I, I don't know how you render out the metallic pass of a garbage mat. If anyone knows how to, um, I would love to see what that looks like. Um, so lastly, what we need to do, so we've selected our passes, we've said we want to export them, we've set it up correctly with our objects. So last is actually exporting it. Now, as far as I know, this can't, does not, can't, does not work with the um, movie render queue and the new high quality movie export, uh, unless I'm literally right about to find it out now. Um, game overrides. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, there's probably a console for it, but uh, we're going to skip that. So as far as I know, it won't work with this. So you just got to use the original uh, render movie out, which is fine. 
Um, so under image output format, it will, you'll see when you have a composure enabled, you actually have this composure export here. Um, and so you just want to enable that and that'll export uh, all of these that we have added in this sequence. Now, the other thing is they're all going to be named the exact same thing, um, which means they'll all overwrite each other, which is very annoying. So uh, on the end of the output directory, we're going to add a couple of things that'll make it automatically create new folders based on what it's doing. Uh, and that is we open a squiggly bracket and we type uh, sequence. Yeah, close the squiggly brackets, open it and type pass and close it. I'm going to double check that. I was wrong. <laughs> Figured and it didn't even save. So we want squiggly line and we want element. Close, squiggly bracket, open, pass, close. Uh, and you want to do that on the uh, file format name as well, which we're going to do in front of the thing. So pass and element, element, squiggly line. And just like that, you won't have to change anything else you change will be applied to everything. You know, so the, the warm up account counts for everything. So it renders all the passes at once. So you're only actually going to see one rendered, which so if we hit capture where actually, where is this saving before I do anything else? Um, saved videos. Maybe this is where it was saving. Um, let's do it in there. So when I hit capture, yes, save it, please. So as you'll see, it's actually, it's going to look the same, but it's going to take, um, I don't know, three times roughly. They don't all take the same amount of time to render, but it is going to take longer than if you were to just render uh, no passes or no layers, I should say. So you can see it skip it. Like this scene should not take this long. I don't even have RTX enabled. Uh, I imagine your disk speed is also going to affect this as rendering, you know, th three images instead of one is going to take a long time. Uh, another thing to mention is you can only render the composure stuff in OpenEXR. You can't do ProRes or anything like that. It's just OpenEXR no matter what. Uh, even if you set, I think this like is actually set to, yeah, AVI, that's bull honky. All right, so we have a look at, uh, it's just created... Um, it did not save the, no, it did not. Alrighty. Uh, I think you have to hit enter for that to save. Did not create the folders cause I, it didn't hit enter. So it didn't actually say that. Oh, they didn't. Okay. So they didn't override each other, but now I've got a really unorganized thing. So I'm going to delete them all and quickly do that the proper way. And I also need to figure out how to open EXRs cause I, and there we go. So as you can see, we've now got uh, one of our composure stuff as enabled. So base layer, final image, base layer, output, base layer, enoughness, uh, gram mat output, final image. Oh yeah. So it was, um, so you don't have to take final image because it'll already do that. Um, but I did. So there we go. Alrighty. So critter is a, faster option than Photoshop, <laughs> especially since I don't have to sign into Critter. Um, so as you can see, we've got all our layers outputted. So here's our base layer um, and the base roughness that we outputted. Uh, here is our matte layer, which um, includes transparency when you export, which is interesting. It's got an alpha channel. Alrighty. Or unless Critter is interpreting it as the alpha channel, because uh, it's because it's put black and white in every channel. Oh, well, either way. Uh, and so we have our foreground image uh, and then we have the world normal. Don't know what I'm going to do with the world normal, the roughness, uh, but the other ones, you know, and then you can go through in regular compositing stuff. So whether that's in After Effects or Resolve or Nuke or whatever what DaVinci makes for that thing, which I want to say is... I keep coming back to Nuke for some reason. Um, or I guess technically you could do some in Premiere Pro, seeing as it supports transparency and stuff like that. Yeah, but um, now you can composite to your heart's intent. So thanks for watching. It's probably a wee bit long for the subject matter. Um, and...
what I ended up doing. Uh, but that's the basics of doing this sort of compositing in Unreal, um, which sort of, you know, more in line with some of the uh, traditional animation software and render engines like um, Octane and Blender and all that for its passes. So it is quite powerful.